Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, let me extend my sincere thanks to um, Fraser and uh, his center for hosting this conference. I think this conference is very timely in more than one way. First of all, it's uh, in conjunction with the uh, 45th anniversary of ASEAN, in conjunction with the 35th anniversary of the cooperation between ASEAN and European Union, and it's a follow-up of the ministerial meeting in Brunei. So I appreciate that tremendously. And secondly, I also thank uh, Petro for the very comprehensive um, presentation. I think that you cover all, all, all those points that I want to raise. Uh, so I don't have much left to, to say. But uh, thirdly, I also have to admit, I am going to say very frankly, and this is my personal remarks, uh, when I get into this room, I look at the audience. My first observation is that half of the audience come from ASEAN embassies. And seven ambassadors turn up to this event. We have Ambassador Thailand busy with Lydia Kashtan at home, Ambassador uh, Indonesia and Myanmar are busy. So it, it tells what? It tells that the in tremendous interest on our part in that bilateral relations. And ambassadors are accompanied with at least one or two officers to say what? To say that we care for this event. And you look at the other half, I keep looking at the door, hoping that more and more European faces coming into this room. <laughs> not Asian, not ASEAN uh, embassy staff. So, first, the interest on the European side in ASEAN and in ASEAN-European cooperation is still very limited. We work very hard. Now, I, I will comment on the success of the, the conferences, but I think that apart from the big change in the management team in uh, EAS quite recently, and uh, also at the commission, uh, uh, commission, church commission, we have a representative church commission here, it's very difficult for us to make a, to, to put the, to, to, uh, the quite across a proper understanding of our role. So I think that this, this kind of, uh, of exercise is very important. <coughs> so I think that my, my, I'm going to say five reasons why EU ASEAN is very important, and five additional reasons why ASEAN EU is urgently important under the current circumstances. And I come up with the two, uh, one, just one, uh, recommendation. The recommendations I want to put forward is that I agree with Severino. Uh, European should take us more seriously. I, I, I think that you have done it, but I think I don't think it's enough. <laughs> and I think that uh, we are said we do not call for a mercy on the European side. This is a two a I mean beneficial huh? two. This is a two-way game. It is in our both interests. Why? Number one, historically, I, I come up with the first part. I think that everyone knows this. But I just want to, to mention that I'm pleased that we also have representative of the Belgian government and the representative of various uh, uh, fédéré, entity fédéré, the uh, regional of, of Belgium. First of all, I mean, I think historically, ASEAN, many ASEAN countries used to be colony of European colonial. So to a various extent, we still have a lot of, uh, you have left some time in, some, something in us. Like in Vietnam, we have French culture. I think in Indonesia, we have Dutch culture, something like that. And the other, uh, the other French, uh, British colony used to live a, a system that's still very influential at the moment. So historically, we have a very strong links between the two, groups, the two groups. And it's not every other group we can have that kind of historical images. Number two, diversity. We are very proud of our own diversity. And Europe, you don't have that. I mean, that's don't have to the to our extent <laughs> because you keep complaining that we have such diverse region things like that but in in, in, the, in terms of you, you you have a, a certain 
uh, because I was involved in the struggle for cultural diversity. I know that how you appreciate that. So if you appreciate cultural diversity, ASEAN is a good place for you to appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of culture, in terms of food, in terms of even political system, in terms of economic development in, in many, many ways. So you look for diversity, we are here to offer you diversity. <laughs> to complement what you need. That's number two. Number three, economically, you just mentioned, and Mr. Valendo also mentioned, we, we, we need each other. Because our two regions are the most integrated and dynamic grouping in the world at the moment. Regardless of the difficulties in our grouping, but we are very proud that we are one of the, the best grouping at I mean, the back of that prison. And the fourth prison, political dialogue and security. You mentioned the role of ASEAN. We play a crucial role, and we are very proud of that unique role. ASEAN is the only grouping that can get, that can <coughs> engage all the major power. Japan, China, India, Australia, USA, and, and uh, European Union. And sometimes, I, uh, 15 years ago, I attended ARF, when we discussed about Myanmar, about Korea. We have, I personally have the, the privilege that only ASEAN could entertain that kind of discussions. We cannot discuss that even at the UN in New York with the presence and support of partners involved, like Myanmar, like Korea. So this is, and you know that uh, in addition to AIF, we have different structure. You also mentioned EAS. But I also want to stress the importance of ATMM. I hope that one day Defense Minister from the Union can join. And this is the only security structure that uh, touch upon a very uh, sensitive security matters. And my fifth reason is that we are the two grouping are trying to build our own community. So if you want to share your experience, the success and the failure, no better student to share than ASEAN, because we are building that. And I think that we can share with you as well, of course. So I think that with that five reasons, as I mentioned, or as it is indicated in the statement, we are natural allies. And then, the five other reasons why our cooperation need to be more urgent. And you have moved drastically in the first six months, I mean, first, first half of this year, as we observe. 2011, no. 2010, not at all. The first one is that because you have the response treaty. With this response treaty, you change completely your structure, your role, you have EAS, and you have the Presidents, Baron Poy and Barroso, I mean, it's then, then you could do better, a job internally, externally. Second reason is that Myanmar is no longer an issue. Vietnam, when it hosted the ASEAN summit in 2004, the biggest problem for the host country is the presence of Myanmar. And you kept saying that you don't want to send high representative because of issue of Myanmar. <coughs> now Myanmar is no longer an issue. So you don't have any reason or for any excuse. <coughs> the third reason is that um, terrorism, Arab Spring, immediate neighborhoods, all your top priorities are no longer the top priorities. I mean, it should not be the top priorities. Of course, we understand last year you had a problem with, uh, you, had, you had preoccupation at Arab Spring. Before Arab Spring, you have so preoccupations with terrorism. And the constant preoccupation is your neighboring, immediate voisinage. But now it's the turn of vision. You should not be a latecomer in this game why USA is shifting its foreign policy, why Japan is shifting tremendously, why Australia and New Zealand. Fourth reason is economic crisis. You mentioned that for the first time, 
European Union has to go through such a serious economic crisis. And ASEAN, we have gone through that in 1997. I think that we can share, and you have no way. Interesting that now I heard, I, I, I heard from some of my friends that many, many people from Greece moved to my country to work. And they, they try to get a job there, a dynamic, growing market. So perhaps at this moment the difficulty is we can offer something to you. And then the focus on the structure of ASEAN. In Asia in general. So these five reasons why we, our cooperation become more and more urgent. And perhaps because of this urgency, I appreciate tremendously the visit to uh, the, the attendance of the Asian Supervision and her visit to Myanmar and to Thailand. And she promised to me personally that she's going to Vietnam. I said that next year. She said, no, this year. So I think this is a move, a shift tremendous shift, and I hope that that shift continue. Now my recommendation. <coughs> Number one, I hope that you understand our culture. We, uh, we, we attach tremendous importance to the human to human contact, leaders to leaders contact. That's why now after the, 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 the coming into force of the ASEAN chapter, we have two summits per year. In addition to the bilateral visit among us, and it's the same for you. We have so many summits a year. So sometime, please take some time to come and see us in our region. I have a statistic that Vietnam sent 13 head of delegation. I mean, head of state, head of party to European Union, and European Union sent only once. It's the Barroso 2007. And for the far, for the 10, nearly 20 years, Vietnam sent 13 leaders. It's not fair. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is stupid. Number two, you are too bureaucratic. <laughs> <laughs> Filipino and Vietnam have signed initial RBCA for more than one year, only and half. And before that, it takes three to four years to negotiate the PCA. And one year and a half after the initial initiality of this agreement, no move. I don't know, we have to wait until <coughs> when. <coughs> problem coming up after problem. Matter of bureaucracy, legality, this country is opting out, the other country does not take the mission across under the new chapter. And when you settle this, the other comes up. So sometimes we wonder. To which extent your interest in our region is genuine? And what is your true, I mean, it's good work. So if, okay, if you are bureaucratic, you don't mind if on our side we are sometimes bureaucratic as well. <laughs> you because think you're less bureaucratic than us? I, at least for the signing of the PCA, <laughs> and at least for the for the uh, uh, scoping of the uh, FTA. I mean, it's, it, you can come up with a number of different arguments for that. Because what was my interpretation is perhaps we have so strong willingness to go forward this to bring forward this relationship, whereas you have that willingness, but your willingness is not strong enough. Because you are so busy with summit with China, uh, summit with Japan, do summit with Russia and uh, India, and, 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 and they go around, and then and not big power that you come up with uh, the problem of uh, uh, Ukraine accession and immediate accession of Russia. So you come up with so many priorities. So last and not least, finally, Vietnam will assume its coordinator EU and ASEAN since uh, next July. Uh, in that capacity, we try to work with you closely. And I hope that the message has come, on, uh, has come across at the leaders level. Now at the think tank level, at the student level, I wish if we could the organize a similar like that with the participation of more students from European school and things like that so they understand the role of, of, of ASEAN. 
And finally, I hope that you will be able to open a European mission to Jakarta. I think that that is not a difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.